And I suppose that's a good place to transition to the other side of this thing, which is what's next for John Calipari in Kentucky. Uh, that's the big question everybody's asking tonight. I'll ask you. He is owed, just so we can get this out of the way, if they wanted to fire him, it's $33 million. That's what he's contractually obligated to get is $33 million. Um, you know, we've seen football programs pay bigger buyouts than this. What would, let's just, let's yeah. open into question. I think you tweeted, it's not crazy or something along these lines. I said, there is a very real chance this is the last game John Calipari coaches at Kentucky. Do you believe that? I do. I wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have tweeted it if I didn't believe it. And the reasons for that are a couple. I do have a column up right now that basically lays out a lot of what has happened here. I'm not going to recite the column. We're on a time crunch. Please go read it. But there's a lot of data in there to show just how this has been going for four years now. And this isn't just an insta reaction to one loss. It's the worst loss of the bunch. But there's a lot here. Uh, a little more context behind this. You know, there is a fracture with John Calipari and his athletic director. That is not that's not a private thing. That's been known there, particularly in that state, and in that city for a while. Um, and I don't think that's ever getting repaired between John Calipari and Mitch Barnhart. And when you have this and you have a fan base that I wrote in the call is now done. They're out. Some of them have been out since St. Peter's two years ago. The rest of them are done. You are not getting these people back. So, yes, it is extremely expensive for John Calipari to be fired right now. And maybe he will have a point or, or it already is at a point where he will not negotiate one penny less than what he's owed. That's fine. But this doesn't seem like it will get better. OK, and there's a lot of reasons for it. And again, if we had 90 minutes to go into it, I would. But Jay Wright was tremendous and basically laying out why Calipari's way of doing this right now, even though we're going to lose the covid year. Can't do it, man. You can't have all these freshmen. And then Oakland, an Oakland team, that's a good Horizon League team. They outclass you in a game like this. The Kentucky's younger players, they shrunk the way that Purdue's did a year ago against 16-seeded FDU. So I think the conversation will be had, and I think it has hit a crossroads. I think there is a chance that John Calipari has coached his last game. If he has not, and I said it on HQ and I'll say it here, there is a chance that he has not coached his last game, and he will still be there. And if he is, I will tell you the only reason why, the only reason, will be because of the $33 million buyout that will be owed to him if they fire him if he's still there what is changing how is this getting fixed it's not like oh it's one bad season no man they haven't gone to the final four it will be at least 10 years the second longest drought in the history of that program dating back to the invention of the final four and now it has been nit terrible year coming off the covid year out to st peter's 15 c two years ago a 12 loss season the last season and getting booted before the first weekend and now you get done in by oakland i just don't see this once was a man who was the savior. He was the right guy at the right time for a decade for this program. But now the program might need someone new. And who that is, is another huge task ahead. If it is going to be someone else, well, there's not a lot of people that can step into the University of Kentucky in 2024 in this era of college athletics and actually make it a, a superior program to what Calipari has had. But I am at a point now where I cannot envision better days ahead for Kentucky under John Calipari. And I think the biggest reason why is it is straight up toxic now with that fan base and that coach. It is college football level at its most, at its highest point toxic. And there is, in my opinion, there is no coming back from this. He's the, he's the smoothest talker on the mic. He, he has been able to handle that hot box forever, but this feels bigger. It feels different. And if they move forward, it will be, uh, under circumstances in which I believe that nobody there would really be happy with. Uh, and the only reason why they would is because of money. They need to divorce. I don't know that they will, um, but they should. It is in both of their best interest. This can't be fun for John. And it's obviously, you know, Kentucky fans have reached the tipping point. A lot of them have already been there. Like you pointed out, the problem for John now is that he can't fix any of this with a recruiting class. They ain't falling for that no more, right? He can't fix any of this with a preseason ranking because they ain't falling for that no more. They like used to, he could fix it with, hey, look what I got coming. And people be like, all right, look what he's got coming. Now nobody cares what you have coming. You know what you got coming? It ain't as good as Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard and DJ Wagner and Aaron Bradshaw. You ain't gonna have Antonio Reeves. So they need to divorce. I don't know that they will. I don't want to speak for John, but he has never struck me as the type that would give money back, right? So if you owe him $33 million, he's probably going to make you pay him $33 million. Uh, but if you're Kentucky, I do think you have to consider it. Uh, you know, like this is one of, if not the biggest brands in the sport, and it is 
incredibly damaged right now. Hadn't been to a Sweet 16 since 2019. Hadn't been to a Final Four since 2015. John's now 1-4 in in his past five NCAA tournament games with losses to St. Peter's and Oakland in that stretch. It's now been 15 years at Kentucky, a bazillion dollars in NBA contracts, loads of great players, only one national championship, zero Final Fours in the past nine seasons. This is the longest John's ever coached in college without making a Final Four. He was in the Final Four in year eight at UMass and then left. In the Final Four in year eight at Memphis, left after year nine. He's now gone nine years without a Final Four at Kentucky. Um, If... And Dan Walken at USA Today wrote a column about this tonight as well. And one of the points he made is that, and, 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 you know, not literally, but his point was you should lock yourself in a room with Mitch Barnhart and whoever else needs to be in the room and figure out a way to to move on. Um, it would like if you're John Calipari, would you like would you because I, I saw this tonight, try to get Michigan. Would you try to get Michigan or do you make Kentucky make the decision on you? Um, yes, I think that's part of it. Now you have to be wanted by Michigan. And I think, a right. key, I think a key context with that is that, and this, I just have learned in, you know, uh, over the past few weeks with this Michigan stuff or not even the few weeks, I guess a week and a half is big thing with Michigan is that football is King there. And this is, this is what was told me by two different people. And it wasn't in reference to Cal specifically. It was like, who's going to be the guy? Well, the thing is, when you go to Michigan, if you get the Michigan job, the reason why Dusty May might be a good guy for that job is he does not have a huge ego. He does not have a huge presence. And John Calipari comes with a lot. I wonder if he would actually be desired by Michigan because of who he is and his potential. You can't basically, what was said to me, and I'm paraphrasing here is, you can go to Michigan. They want you to be really good at Michigan. You cannot get in the way of football being really good at Michigan. And so I almost wonder if that is a disqualifying situation for Cal. I'm not, I, I, Cal could very well be the best person for Michigan. I just wonder if the fits there. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like at, at this point, I think if you're anybody, you have to have second thought, not anybody, you know, like if SMU, you know, <laughs> like if you're, if you're, if, if, if you can get John Calipari and your SMU, I guess you do that. But you know, the Michigans and the big jobs, I think you, you have to have second thoughts about it. Cause it's like, all right, what can we give this guy? that they can't give him. What could we possibly give him that they can't give him? And he ain't winning with what they're giving him. So what, like, what are we doing? I think that's a real question. So it's just, it's been touch and go for a minute with John and those fans. And they had enough good moments this season where it was like, well, you know, if we ever do that a lot, then, you know, we could get where we're trying to get to. But when this happens again, so, so, so soon after St. Peter's, it's just, he can't, undo some of this stuff until like next March at the earliest. And that's a real problem. So we'll see where it goes from here, but I'm with you. The, the, it, it's not that I can't imagine better days for John Calipari and Kentucky together. It's just that, man, it's going to be hard to get there. And even when you get there, every time something bad happens now, it's just a eruption. And that becomes very difficult to try to it's just a hard way to live. It's yeah. a hard way to live. So yeah, we got a transfer. I can't imagine he wants to live like this either. That's all. That's also part well, of that's, it. You that's, cannot that's tell another... me that he is enjoying his life right now, living like this. Well, I well, so, well, I had a buddy of mine text me, and he said, "Can't you just negotiate? Say, hey, John, um, you know, for twenty five million dollars, for twenty two million dollars, you know, can we just do a nice, mm-hmm. put our arms around each other, and say it's been a." almost like Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick thing and say, Hey, we've had a good run, but it's time. You know, uh, these are all conversations that need to happen. I'm confident they'll be happening on some level in the coming hours and, and days. And we'll see where it goes.